Welcome to the Monday, August 19th, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Go ahead. Benjamin Cheney, member. Mike Miller, staff. Stephen Everett. Martha Smirsky, member. And um, is, is or Eric around? Uh, Eric should be online. Eric is on. He's on mute right now. And Rebecca's here as member, too. All right, let me see if I can make sure everyone can unmute themselves. Yeah, Eric's here. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Thank you, Eric. Oh, good. <laughs> and there's Rebecca on as well. She said she's here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. No, okay. At this point, we'll let Mike review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. For those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. To join the full video options, type this link here that you see here into your web browser, and uh, that will take you to this. Alternatively, you can call into the phone number that is here. Um, and when it prompts you, you can put in the meeting ID, which is here. Uh, either way, uh, we'll get noticed that you want to enter the meeting, and we will let you in. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting, please email me at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting, and I will uh, try to respond to you. For those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce back background noise. If you're on the phone, it is star six to mute and star six to unmute. The Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those on the phone, you can press star nine to do so. Or state your name uh, if you're unmuted and wait to speak until the chair has recognized you. Once the chair has recognized someone to participate, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. Um, continuing the meeting if necessary. Uh, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, we will continue it to a time and date certain. And I'll now hand it back over to the chair. At this point, unless anybody has anything to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. This is Martha. Second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. William Russell. Ben. Steve Everett. Eric. Martha. Rebecca. At this point, we can go forward to the first application for 78 Berry Street, owner Canton Associates, LLC, applicant, wood and wood signs regarding a new projecting sign. Someone here from... Yeah. Like he's muted. Try to find the. Can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Hi, it's Sparky Potter from Wooden Wood Signs. Hi, Sparky. Go ahead and describe your application for us. This application is for Capital Spa. Uh, it's a blade sign um, that is projecting um, off the building. So 24 inch by 24 inch blade sign. Uh, the drawing was, was sent to you folks, but basically it's made of inch and a half thick uh, HDU composite board and painted with latex paints. It's got raised copy and a raised logo, and it is two-sided. And in the, in the drawing, um, it shows the position on the building. It's on a fascia band. Um, and I'm not sure if you have access to the drawing, but it does, it does show the location. And the colors have been called out. Is there any sign um, here at all at, at this point? I'm sorry, what was that? Is there a sign there right now? No, there's not.
and it's off the building about three and a half inches. It's or almost four inches off. So it's 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 remote. I mean, it's it's, it's compact and relatively small. And I believe it fits with all your regulations. Anyone have any comments, questions, suggestions regarding the sign? If not, then I'll go through the criteria. You've heard this before, Sparky. I'm just going to read down through the criteria for signs in the con design control district. Okay. The science location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties. This application is acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. This one is acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. This location is acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. William. Ben. Martha. Stephen. Eric. Rebecca. So application is passed in unanimously. You want to just very much the next steps for for them uh so i'm not entirely sure how the next steps are going to work typically we would have this signed um i think what will end up happening is i will have to scan this and send it to you to have your signature and then you can scan it and send it back or you can stop by the office um which is currently in the police station to sign um to sign the form um, scanning would be great if that's okay. 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 I will scan that and get that to you sometime tomorrow, late tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you, Sparky. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Goodbye. The next application is for a three Chapman road, a review to plan to demolish an attached garage, Benjamin Doyle and Angela Shea. Yeah, if you want Go to ahead and come up and. Hi, uh, my name is Ben Doyle. I live at Three Chapman Road. I've been here before. Okay. Nice to see you. I'm assuming the, uh, I'm assuming the garage is in tough shape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's um, it is. It's on a. It is on a, a small, so frost walls, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, there, it's all broken up. There's dirt coming in the back side. Um, you know, it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's, it definitely was not an original garage and I think it was made with repurposed lumber from maybe a previously existing structure. I don't know, even the foundation itself, it's not quite square on the foundation. It looks like they've built it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it served its purpose, but it's no longer, um, really functional. And, the, and as mentioned in the application, we're, we're working on designs for, uh, an addition on our house and, um, that would sit along the same footprint and we're going to be applying separately for a permit for that with detailed drawings and all of that. Okay. Um, but what we need to do is take down the garage now one, because it's not structurally sound, but also as part of that, we'll be doing some excavation to understand what the, um, what the soil's like. And a lot of this is ledge. And so our design will actually be impacted by what degree of, where the elevations are in the ledge. So it's a little bit of, um, you know, exploratory, I guess. <laughs> then I'm just curious, were you ever able to put a car in there? Uh, I did not. The previous owner did put a car in there. Um, yeah, she, <clears throat> yeah. I, we keep bikes in it. 
I, this is this is Eric. Uh, uh, I am Ben is my former boss when I worked at the Preservation Trust, and I don't think I have a conflict. But uh, if anybody thinks I does, I will recuse myself. I've seen the garage. I have not gone and looked at it as part of this application. Eric, I would say that I worked for you. <laughs> The uh, my recollection of it is is that the roof is really bad on it too. There are only a couple of criteria that apply to the demolition of the garage. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings should be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the building or other properties. Uh, for consideration of potential impacts on the house, which staff suggests are minimal given location of garage and description of the house in the historic register included in the meeting packet. Um, and I can go through the, the talking about removal of historic materials or alterations, but it sounds like this probably was an original with the house anyway. Uh, character defining features, finishes and construction uh, it shall be preserved if deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than placed if possible, uh, where severity of deterioration requires a replacement of a, of a feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Um, and again, in this particular case, if it's built after the fact of the original building, then you could take a look at a compatible design for the addition that you're planning and or garage whether that's going to be included in the addition as well. Um, that one's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Again, acceptable for demolition based on the deteriorated state of the building. All in favor of the application to demolish the garage, speak your names. What, what's their... What is um, what's going to be exposed when you take it down? Yeah. Um, so if you're looking at, at this, um, this little jog out where the porch is underneath is um, is uh, insulated space, and so there's a a wall there, uh, a plywood wall um, with an exterior door there. Um, Again, it's the idea is that it's temporary. Like we plan to come back here with the full design of the addition, um, hopefully to begin construction this year. And so uh, it, that'll be exposed, but um, only for a little bit. So there was an entrance through the back of the garage into the house is what you're saying? Yeah. And so yes. there's an exterior door there? Yes. Yeah. And that's just sheathing that... that you would see? Yeah. Well, um, shingles, mm -hmm. like the shingles that are on the porch when this was added on, you see those and then and then it's just um, plywood and stone. Yep. Plywood sheeting. Any other questions, comments? I mean, just a, maybe there's a dumb question, but like, I, mean, I have no objections to removing the garage, but I know that like some, uh, is it worth making a, making the removal contingent upon, like if, if you know, for some reason, God forbid, yeah. you don't move forward with the, yeah, yeah. With the renovation of putting back materials in, in common. Totally. I'm totally fine with that. You mean like re-shingling? Yeah. yeah. Around the exterior sure. door, just shingle it and make it. Yeah. Sort of blend into the rest of the house. Yeah. But I, I just wouldn't want to do that. Like you're saying, if the project fell through and didn't, yeah. Right. So I, there's yeah. no yeah. people. For sure. I'll just add that in the notes.
And she said that the new construction of an addition in place of the deteriorated shed is delayed a significant time or canceled. Finished shingles and, uh, or, or, and other materials to be compatible with the dwelling would be applied as a finish to any exposed space. Does that sound okay? It sounds great. Nice job. Okay. So again, all in favor of the demolition with that contingency. William. Ben. Stephen. Martha, I say yes. Eric. Rebecca. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good luck with your project. Yeah, thanks so much. I'll be happy. And as long as you're here, I'll get you to sign this. Just right under my name there. Thanks so much, everybody. Okay, again, good luck with your project. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. I think you're the most regular. <laughs> And our next application for four Langdon Street, Montpelier Property Management Owner and Sheriff Churchill, Bet Nails Bistro. Describe your sign. Well, it's simple. I have <laughs> Although it's pretty explained. It's actually kind of funny because this is the cover for piano keys. Oh, nice. Oh, itself. And then it's galvanized um, letters that are both glued and screwed in to the shelf. And Aaron lost the L, so he put nails in, in place. <laughs> L, yeah. Which made it even better. Yeah. And basically, we would just love to hang it over the front door. It's a perfect spot in the uh, um, frame work. I think that I think this should be a photo of that. Um, Will that be mounted tight to a surface or raised just for ventilation? Uh, it would be tight to the surface. So okay. We've got three spots. Prepared for packing it to so that it's wood. I what just didn't know if you wanted to either space it out so that any moisture that got behind would drain out and dry, or you could use a piece of something like water and ice shield behind it so that water's not going to get behind it. You could do that. The There's also the lip of the Okay, above. there's a water table that I, yeah, there's water. a little framework above it that so it shouldn't get too wet. Should actually protect the most of the sign. So. Either that or when you mount it, if you mount it tight to the building, you may want to put some flexible caulk along again just to keep moisture. There. I've replaced so many <laughs> you're, you're an deteriorated wood components because, because of, of moisture. So do yourself a favor and do whatever you can to keep that seal. <laughs> Any comments, questions about the sign? Looks great. Yeah, it looks really nice. And I appreciate the picture of him holding it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I said, I can't reach. You're going to have to get up there. <laughs> you know, a little crooked, but. I was just delighted that it would fit so nicely in that slide. And you don't want to suggest that the first first meeting we were here when we were putting on our other sign that we should put something there. And it made sense. Fine. It looks nice. Yeah. I think it'll look really nice in that location. Thank you. I can again go through the criteria for the sign. Sign, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. By the way, is there any existing lighting for it? Or do you get ambient lighting from the street light? Uh, whatever light there's, there's two lights on either side over the windows, which we do like them there, but we were talking about maybe aiming them that way. Okay. That would be the only thing. That might help light it up. Fine, they're existing, so oh, yeah. you can yeah. aim them and so they do what you, what you want them to do for the sign. If they like the bridge, it'd be plenty of light. Yeah. Well, that's what, and that's in the plan, so it looked lovely last year. It was awesome. It inspired me to put a Christmas tree on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bans on historic structures. Acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries acceptable. 
Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be of the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the application and sign, speak your names. William. Ben. Stephen. Martha, I say yes. Eric. And Rebecca. Application passes. Five to nothing in favor. And I'll get you to come up here and sign. right below my name. Okay. Does anyone have any comments or questions about the meeting minutes on July the 1st? July the 1st? Or although, July although the agenda says 7-1, the minutes say 7-15. Yeah. Well, let's try the 15th since that's what we have in the packet. <laughs> um, I've read them and I make a motion that we accept them the way they're written. All second. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. William. Ben. Martha. Eric. So minutes are accepted five to zero. I wasn't here, so I can't vote. And does anyone have anything else? No. Otherwise, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. And I'll second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. William. Ben. Stephen. Martha. Eric. Rebecca. Meeting is adjourned.